Hi, everybody. So um, uh, this was, uh, a, I think from Obs and Kaini, most of you would, be, would have been quite um, pleased to see the questions which came from here. Not much asked, surprisingly. There were just 10 or 11 questions. And um, uh, so we'll quickly go through them. This was a repeat question. It's come, it's usually asked now very often in all the exams. Uh, I think the same question came in last year's NEET PG also. So the optimal time, if it was asked post part time IUCD insertion, then your answer is going to be within 48 hours. Remember, so this would have been the best answer. Remember, post placental is within 10 minutes, but I think the question asked was postpartum. Postpartum is within 48 hours. You can put in a IUCD. All right, so um, uh, I'm just looking at the, ch uh, the, the chat box also. If any questions come in, let me know, okay? This was also a repeat question, an exact same question from, I think, 2021 or 22, INI. And which instruments will you use in a cesarean section? Very, very straightforward, right? So we will use a doyens, of course. We will use a BP knife and handle. We don't use a shirotka. Shirotka is used to lift the uterus in hysterectomies. Carmen's cannula is used for MTPs. Cusco's is used for vaginal examination. Green Armitage and Alice Forceps. So this is quite straightforward. So A, B, F, and G would have been the correct answer. Okay. So if it was post placental, as some of you are saying here, then it would be 10 minutes. But if the question was postpartum, it would be 48 hours. So it all depends on what exactly was asked. All right. Okay. Next question was on pap smear, atypical glandular cells are seen. Now, atypical glandular, glandular cells can come either from the endocervix because that's where, that's where glands are or from the endometrium. So what do we need to do? We always, whenever there's an abnormal pap smear, we always take a cervical biopsy or a colposcopic guided cervical biopsy and an endometrial biopsy. In fact, we also take an endocervical curettage. This also we take because we need to know where exactly the abnormality is from the endocervix or from the endometrium. So this would have been the best answer. All right. So the confusion on post placental postpartum will go on. I don't know what was asked, but I've told you what the answer should be depending on what was asked. Right. So let's move on. Again, a very often asked question, 15 millimeter thickened endometrium in a perimenopausal or any woman above the age of 40 or any woman in the reproductive age group with a thick endometrium, what should you be doing? You should be doing an endometrial biopsy because what are we thinking? We're thinking of hyperplasia and hyperplasia is always a histopathological diagnosis. So you have to do an endometrial biopsy. She was 35 years old. Okay, so as I said, irrespective of the age, any woman in the reproductive age group, if she's having an endometrial thickness of more than 12, some books would say more than 15 millimeter, has to be biopsied. We need to do, an, do a biopsy. Okay, <clears throat> so we should repeat a pap after you know what the biopsy says. The biopsy might come normal, then you will repeat a pap. But first, we always need to biopsy an abnormal pap smear. Okay, there's a question. This was not an OB OBG question. I feel it was just one of the options was relevant to OBG. So I put it here. It is more of a medicine or a pathology question, I, I would say. It, took, it was a question on different types of shock. And by chance, one of the options was uterine inversion causes which kind of shock? Uterine inversion causes neurogenic shock, right? And that, would, that was the correct option. The other options, I'm not too sure, but these are the two options I got. That severe shock is when blood loss is more than 30 to 40 percent and gram negative bacteria would cause endotoxic shock. So I'm not too sure, but definitely the OBS and gynae option was the neurogenic shock. But then again, this is not really an OBS and gynae question, except the option. There's another question, I think, now on uh, OC pills and risk of DVT. Uh, that was also like one of the options was from OBS and gynae. Unfortunately, very few OBS and gynae questions. Okay, a question always comes on PPH. I've told you this always, always has to come. Eutotonics are given, but bleeding persists. The next best step is mechanical management. So medical followed by mechanical followed by surgical. In fact, medical and mechanical go hand in hand. If that fails, then we go to surgical management. All right. Okay. So then there was a question. This was a bit of a tricky question, I feel, right? If this was the exact question, let me know what the exact question is, which is not a test of ovarian reserve in the early follicular phase. 
was this the question let me know so in to be honest all of them are done as tests over wear and reserve we do a day two fsh we do a day two e2 we do a amh which can be done in any time of the cycle but newer studies now say you should do amh also in the early follicular phase and we do an antral follicle count on day two so all are done on day two right Okay, other options were devascularization and uterine artery embolization. All right. So here, the best option amongst all of these would be estradiol because estradiol per se is the least sensitive. We, we would never rely just on a day two estradiol. We always club it with, of course, the best investigation. If it's asked, usually this is the question which comes with what is the best investigation. It is an AMH. But if, um, um, uh, to be honest, all are correct, but the least sensitive is the day two estradiol. So this would have been the best option. Okay, so this is, the question did not mention early follicular phase, then estradiol, because estradiol is the one which we do, we actually do all of them in the early follicular phase, but E2 specifically on day two, because in day two, all the hormone levels have to be on the baseline value. If you're finding a raised A2 right, E2 right at the beginning, it is a marker of poor ovarian reserve. Okay. So all are signs of impending eclampsia. Again, this is direct PYQ. Same question has come in the past. And we all know the answer here is pedal edema. Pedal edema is can be physiological. In fact, it's been removed from the definition of preeclampsia. Many years earlier, it was actually a part of definition of preeclampsia. But since the longest time, it's removed from there because it could be physiological also. So it is not a sign of preeclampsia. Neither is it a sign of impending eclampsia. So headache, blurring of vision and epigastric pain are signs of impending eclampsia. There was a question on the NACO kits. Now the NACO kits, the question which was asked, the list of symptoms were given and they said for which symptom is the NACO kits not given in men? Just a second, this is persistent pedal edema. So in men, where will you not give the NACO kits for which symptom? So the I, I, and I think this was lower abdominal pain. Lower abdominal pain, remember, is a sign of PID where we give the yellow kit. Okay, and this is given in women who have PID and it is not a symptom for which we give an ACO kit in men. Right, so this was multiple option. This was not there. Inguinal swelling, lower abdominal pain. This was multiple option. Okay, was there anything else? So vaginal discharge is, of course, also something which we will not give for men because... Vaginal discharges for women, where we give the green kit. So the green kit and yellow kit are usually specific for women. Okay, so it was a multiple option, correct answer. This was not there. Syndromic approach was not there. Okay, so I got this question. But remember the yellow kit for PID, that is lower abdominal pain, when the symptom is lower abdominal pain. And the green kit for vaginal discharge are specific for women. It was not multiple. Okay, it was not. It was there, but it was not a multiple option. Understood. Okay. Yes, NACO kits are the same as the STI kits. Next is strawberry cervix. We all know this. I don't know if there's an image or not, but the question was, what is the causative organism and what is the treatment? The causative organism is the protozoa trichomoniasis vaginalis, and the treatment is oral metronidazole or secnidazole or tinidazole and we always give partner treatment also so i do not know what the exact question was trichomonas yes correct last question was multiple correct the preeclampsia one okay this was multiple correct got it Understood. Was persistent fetal edema. Four options are given for which eclampsia was asked. Got it. So there was an image here. This was an image-based question where the strawberry cervix was given and the treatment was not asked. Okay. Only the causative organism was asked. Got it. So I will correct this. So very easy, straightforward question. One question from vaginitis is always usually asked. Then a question on placenta previa. There was given a scenario, a placenta previa at 30 weeks with minimal bleeding. Okay, that's what was, what was mentioned. Vitals were stable uh, and she's not actively bleeding. So what will you do? You will follow the McAfee-Johnson line of management, which is conservative management. You won't rush for delivery at 30 weeks. Placenta previa is where you have a role of waiting. Waiting till when? Till 37 weeks or SOS if she has another bout of heavy bleeding or <clears throat> persistent active bleeding or if their vitals deteriorate or if there's fetal distress. Fetal heart was 140. 
Okay, blood pressure was 110 by 70. Thank you all so much for adding to this hospitalization. Admit and give conservative management. One option was expectant, correct, right? Now, admit and give expectant management. So, yes, you will definitely admit her as part of McAfee or Johnson. But anything else, what was the fourth option? Okay, so that ends uh, OBS and gynae. Organ okay, so thank you so much for helping me out. But as you can all see, OBS and gynae was quite, quite straightforward. And I'm very disappointed that very few questions came. But I'm glad that you've all answered well and all the best uh, for the result.